assalamu alaikum friends welcome to my channel so today's standard is ifrs 7 right previously as you have seen that we have covered ifrs 5 non current assets help for sale and discontinued operations and today we are going to do disclosure of financial instruments this is also very small standard and this is related to your ifrs 9 okay the main financial instruments okay but this is small the disclosure part is in a separate standard okay it is not in ifrs 9 it is in ifrs 7 so this disclosure is only for the financial instruments okay ifrs 7 so what are the main disclosure let us see one two okay so there are two uh, main disclosure number one information about the significance of financial instruments for an entity's financial performance and position number two information about the nature and the extent of the risk arising from, arising from financial instruments okay the nature and the extent of risk okay these are the two main disclosure uh, what is the significance of the financial instruments okay because this is uh, this is uh, broken down into wider okay it is broken down into more broad uh, components what are the components that makes up uh, the significance how can you say that financial instruments are significant what are the significance of financial instruments importance of financial instruments okay that is there and also the nature and the extent of the risk is given here okay so there are two significance of financial instruments make sure that you know this okay ifrs 7 is a standard which does not it's not very popular it does not come very much but when if it comes you should be able you should be prepared enough okay so an entity must disclose the significance of financial instruments for their financial position and performance the disclosure must be made for each class of financial instruments each class means if you have financial asset let's say if you have five financial assets and you have a financial liability all the five financial assets needs to be disclosed separately okay each for each class you cannot combine and put them together for example you cannot uh, say financial asset minus financial liability and you put the net amount no you cannot do that separately you have to show the financial asset separately you have to show the financial liability also different classes of financial instruments need to be shown separately differently okay Discl you need to disclose this separately second uh, significance is an entity must disclose items of what should an entity disclose items of income expense Maybe I can highlight this, okay. Uh, it an entity must disclose items of income, expense, gain, losses with separate disclosure of gain and losses for each class of financial instrument. You see, how did you get that gain? How did you get that loss? The gain and loss you get through the financial, the fair value movements, right. For the financial instrument that also separately you need to disclose for each financial instrument okay because every uh, there are different classes of financial instruments each uh, every financial instrument is not same so don't uh, treat it as one there are separate financial instruments next let us go to the nature and the extent of the risk arising from the financial instruments there are two disclosure you need to make when it comes to the risk and the extent of the risk one is qualitative one is quantitative quantitative we know it's number qualitative is not number it's non financial okay so the qualitative disclosure describes three things what is it a risk exposure for each type of financial instrument let's say you can say the risk is high medium low moderate what type of risk it is is it very highly risky that financial instrument what type of risk is that okay but here also see if you have noticed one thing they are not treating the financial instrument as one thing all the, there are different types of financial instruments and each needs to be dealt separately and disclosed separately when it comes to risk also for risk for each type of financial instrument should be shown separately disclosed separately okay second management policies for objectives process for managing those risks how are you managing those risks also needs to be told what are the policies what are the objectives of your company in dealing with this risk third changes from the prior period how it changed from the previous year to this year the risk changed that also needs to be mentioned why they are they, there's a separate standard for the disclosure of financial instruments why is it so important there are so many other things but disclosure part was not so important for the other standards why it is so specifically important for financial instruments that a separate standard is there itself just for the disclosure of financial instruments why is it so important any one of you have an idea first of all before, before blindly just memorizing the points the reason is because most of the fraud and if you see it is through done through financial instruments why because financial instrument is a very complex instrument it is something which can you can manipulate it it's very hard for user to understand right 
it is not something very uh, simple that okay this is the this is this it's not something like inventory is okay you can go and check this is the cost this is the, uh, the, the net real as well value the lower of this or it is not something like a non current asset you see or tax where, where where things are easier you know how to calculate even a user they themselves can calculate and see whether the one whether whether the prepare have done is correct or not even the auditor when they audit financial instrument is one area where auditor spend most of their time okay if you see most of the scandals were the happen in ron uh, the author edison okay have uh, what happened with anderson then ron what happened because of the financial instruments it's easy to hide okay things from your balance sheet relating to financial instruments you can manipulate it so so that's why uh, this there's a separate standard for the disclosure you know to disclose and that also they are they are, they are focusing more on each class of financial instruments need to be disclosed separately whether it's qualitative whether it's quantitative whether the risk whether the gain whether the loss separately that's why this is so important that's why you need to understand this because tomorrow when you go in the real world and when you if you are working in this field financial instruments okay you need to know we, we use financial instruments for speculating for hedging for so many things we use so tomorrow if you are working in this field the finance field you need to know this how how you need to, how how you need to disclose because if you are not disclosing it according to the standard then it is said that you are not being ethical you are not following you are not complying with the rules and you have to pay a heavy price for it if you are not disclosing this the required uh, things that's why you need to know the standard the, what what needs to be disclosed okay okay so those were about the qualitative disclosure now we are coming to the quantitative disclosure towards the quantitative so the quantitative disclosure provides information with the extent to which the entity is exposed to risk based on information provided internally to the entity scheme management person this disclosure includes okay basically you need to uh, what you need to focus is what are the disclosure okay one summary of quantitative data about exposure to each risk at the reporting date at each risk next three types of risk needs to be dis uh, disclosed credit risk liquidity risk market risk okay there there are key, there are key type of risk there are so many types of risk okay you go to sbl you will learn all the types of risk i think 12 13 types of risks are there out of it this three are very important it's so important that it needs to be disclosed separately credit risk liquidity risk market risk okay next concentration your concentration of risk needs to be uh, explained how concentrated is your risk is is your risk very concentrated in one particular financial instrument that needs to be disclosed because it's so important financial instruments okay so we have a test your understanding for that and with that we are over so we are over okay only this much you need to know for ifr7 with that we have a small test your understanding i think it's better we should go through this okay we should not uh, omit it because this will give a better understanding of how to apply ifr7 to your exam okay so the requirement is asking discuss the director's view that uh, no further information regarding the above should be disclosed in financial statements because it would be excessive okay so some of them what they do when they try to when they want to uh, conceal a fraud or they are doing some fraud or they want they don't want to show it what they do say they use this statement you will often hear them saying the statement uh, it's not needed it's too excessive you know uh, it's not important i feel it's not important and it will make the it, the information will be so excessive that users will not have the time to read all this you know these are the statements used by those people who try to conceal they try to hide it okay but now you have the knowledge of ifr7 now it is your time to apply it in this case whether you have to disclose it or not so let us read laser is a debt issuer whose business is the securitization of a portfolio of underlying investments and financing their purchase through the issuing of listing limited recourse debt okay the repayment of the debt okay i hope you can follow me through okay we are here the repayment of the debt is dependent upon the performance of the underlying investment debt holders bear the ultimate risk and repose of ownership of the underlying investment you see the risk is so concentrated towards whom the debt holders because they bear the ultimate risk and repose of ownership of the underlying investments given the debt specific nature of the underlying investment risk profile of the individual debt may differ okay Lisa does not consider his debt holders as being amongst the primary user of the financial statements, and accordingly does not wish to provide disclosure of the debt holder exposure risk in the financial statements as distinct from the risk faced by the company shareholder. In accordance with IFRS seven, so they are saying that this is not so important. Then they they should not disclose it because they are not considering the debt holders as their primary stakeholders. Okay, understanding. 
they think that they are not the primary users of the financial statements as compared to the shareholders so now you have the knowledge of IFRS 7 now you have to say them whether they are right or wrong okay so now we'll go to the answer test understanding now if you see here okay since this is chapter 14 in chapter sorry this is uh, chapter 12 in this chapter 12 you have the whole IFRS okay IFRS 9 will be coming after this so there I will go through the remaining portion of it okay since we have finished the disclosure okay there are three standards I have told you classification of liabilities and equities is one separate standard IS 32 rest all financial assets liabilities derivatives uh, impairment of financial assets everything is under IFRS 9 and the disclosure part is in IFRS 7 okay if you see the bullet points here only three things you need to know under the standards number one what is the significance importance of financial instrument number two nature and the extent of the risk how risk it is third qualitative and quantitative issues okay so these are the three areas we need to go now we'll go through test your understanding uh, two right not two i don't remember the this thing so it was since we definitely will be having tons of it's definitely the last test your understanding because this is the last uh, standard in this chapter okay it has no calculation so we have to cover this when we go through okay it is this one okay this is the answer so what is the answer saying leases perception of who could reasonably be considered to be among the users of his financial statements is too narrow being limited to the company shareholder rather than including their holders it's too narrow only they're including shareholder how can it be that only the shareholders are the primary state uh, the user of the financial statements now is1 bring is1 here okay because is1 also talks about the presentation of financial statements but is1 talks about presentation of financial statements overall it takes everything into account how an asset liability in uh, equity income expense needs to be presented but IFRS 7 only for financial instruments okay so is1 states that the objective of the financial statement is to provide information about the financial position performance and cash flows of an entity that is useful to a wide range of users and you making economic decisions just look at the definition of it i would like to highlight the definition out for you so that you can see why you have to disclose this piece of information again i'm reading it all right what does it say what is the objective of financial statement it is to provide information about three things what are the three things financial position financial performance cash flow always remember this of an entity that is useful to whom to a wide range of users in making economic decision wide range of users not just shareholder is1 says that so the standard also states that the omissions or misstatements of an item are material if they could individually or collectively influence the economic decision that users make on the basis of the financial statements yes what is the you have to include the concept of materiality to your answer because you are they are telling omit don't disclose so if you omit if you don't disclose it you have to show whether it's material or not if it's material and if you disclose it it's not acceptable if something is material you cannot omit it you can you have to disclose it so as uh, separately you have to disclose it is1 says it okay now let us go to the objective of ifrs7 what is the objective of ifrs7 disclosure is to require entities to provide disclosure the financial statements that enable users to value the significance of why they are disclosing to know that uh, to know what is the significance of financial instruments for this reason that is the objective of ifrs7 you need to disclose so that they can see the significance of financial instruments for the entity's financial performance and position IFRS 7 states that amongst other matters for each type of risk arising for financial statements and entity shall disclose shall disclose IFRS 7 says it two things exposure to risk and how they arise objectives policies and process for managing the risk and methods used to measure the risk thus the risk attached to the debt should be disclosed finally they are giving the conclusion in one line the risk attached to the debt should be disclosed okay so this the the, the two bullet the two bullet points they give is from the IFRS 7 we had learned just now okay so with this I have finished IFRS 7 okay the next standard is what right it is ifrs it is ifrs 9 yes definitely it is ifrs 9 you can uh, see the this thing uh, when you're studying okay i would say that study together three standards you need to study together what what is it is32 
the classification of financial instruments, the disclosure of financial instruments, IFRS 7 and IFRS 9, the financial instruments. Okay, all these three needs to be learned together because they are, they are they are related. They are they are one one thing only, but it is in three separate standards. Okay, so see you in the next standard, the most complex standard ever, IFRS 9. Right? Oh yes, uh, one more standard is there before that. But definitely this is linked to IFRS 9. Okay, the standard is IFRS 8, segment reporting and all. So see you in the next lecture. Till then, take care.